Chrome extensions are an excellent way for software developers to enhance a website or web app's core offering. And with a little bit of creative thinking, you can develop a popular Chrome extension and make yourself a decent chunk of change too. That's what I did. I created several Chrome extensions for a niche user base that I built up to a point that I could quit my crappy corporate day job. And then I went on to scale those up to a point where uh, I eventually was able to sell these apps in a life-changing cash lump sum exit. However, it's not always smooth sailing and Chrome extensions come with their own unique set of challenges that you should be aware of so you can best prepare for and mitigate them. So let's dive into the list of challenges, starting with challenge number one, which is a copycat. So people copying your app. So you want to reduce the likelihood of copycats by making it more difficult for them to reverse engineer your code. And you can do this by obfuscating any client side code and performing as much processing on the server side as possible. Now, in some cases, this just isn't possible and you have to go into this with your eyes wide open. But in my opinion, the best way to combat copycats is to offer the best in class customer experience, listen to user feedback, implement feature requests and continue continue to innovate, move forward and introduce new features to keep your apps offering much more appealing than any potential competitors. All right, challenge number two is that Chrome extensions are built on moving foundations somewhat, given that they are generally built to enhance a particular website or web app. The developer is at the mercy of the website or web app owners when they decide to change the look and structure of the website at any point. For example, my Chrome extensions were built upon the Merch by Amazon platform, and once every few weeks or months, Amazon would make some updates to the UI some small, some massive. Um, and sometimes you would just wake up and realize, oh, the extension is no longer there because certain ideas that it relied on being in the HTML no longer present or had been renamed. And you'd have to go through an investigation and resolve the uh, issues uh, to ensure the app was functioning as it was supposed to. So it's somewhat a moving foundation that you're building your app on as opposed to a standalone web app. Drawback number three is that Google can change the rules at any point. It's their store, they can do whatever they want. And you know, if they basically changed some of their policies, uh, that could negatively impact your extension in some way. Maybe worse than that is if they were to remove some core functionality that your app relied on. You've got to remember that ultimately Google has its users' best interests at heart. And if there's any sort of vulnerabilities that are opened up by having certain functionality in Chrome extensions, extensions, it's likely they're going to sort of patch those up or make them more secure uh, or make the user opt into them more. So just before we go into the next challenge, if you want the inside scoop on how to build, test, publish and promote a profitable Chrome extension, then download my free PDF quick start guide on developing Chrome extensions from the link in the description below. Okay, drawback number four is uh, that complex Chrome extensions can be difficult to develop and debug. So if you're looking to develop a complex Chrome extension, be prepared for a lot of development and debugging time. And I'd say Chrome extensions are somewhat difficult to debug and get working properly, especially as they're reliant on the host website as a foundation and relying on that host website behaving consistently. Uh, so this difficulty is kind of multiplied when your extension interacts with multiple websites as you need to take into account the different ways each website behaves. So my Chrome extensions relied on data being pulled in from Airtable's API, calling some Amazon web services, and also uh, scraping bits of data off Amazon's web pages too. Now, if any of those parts sort of bugged out or behaved differently, then it was very difficult to sort of debug reliably. So bear that in mind. I mean, 99% of the time, everything will be okay, but when things do start to to go awry, it can be difficult to track down bugs, especially if it's sort of timing issues. Drawback number five is uh, conflicts with other extensions. So Chrome extensions can often conflict with each other, especially if they're trying to do similar things. So for example, one of my extensions um, would basically pull in some data and append it at the end of the row on a table. However, I knew there was another extension that was doing something similar and also putting its commands at the end of the table. And eventually, I to reach out to the developer of that Chrome extension and work uh, together to basically say, right, where are you going to put your stuff? What's your CSS? Because quite often you can have CSS classes that clash as well. But it's worth working on to make sure that your user base is happy and they can use both extensions at the same time and they work in harmony uh, rather than uh, having conflicts that need to be resolved or causing any sort of wonky behavior. 
All right, so developing Chrome extensions can be a profitable skill building and audience expanding work, but like anything else, it takes time and effort to become good at it. So don't give up if you're struggling at first, keep practicing and you'll get there and bear these uh, drawbacks or cons in mind when you're doing the, your development and just keep an eye out for those potential problems. So if you're looking for a great way to get started with building Chrome extensions, then you should download my free quick start guide to developing Chrome extensions from the link in the description below. It's full of actionable advice and tips on everything to get you started and take you from zero all the way up to Chrome extension hero. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content on Chrome extensions. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alrighty, cheers for now.